we were testing the identified area detesting detection system as part of the accompanying uh, research for nature conservation as part of the Natfel Vincent website testing research project. And uh, the company made it available to us, for which we're very grateful. It was done near Donstov Geislingen in Swabia, in a test wind site, which is to the east of Stuttgart. You see the red pin indicating where the area is situated. And here we are looking at it from above. The test site is right there on the plateau of the Swabian Alp mid-range mountains. The time during which we collected the data was 20th of April till 18 May 2020. The objective of the test was to uh, examine and investigate the detection performance of the system. We had no assessment regarding shutdown because there was no wind turbine on this test sign yet. Here we have the study area again, an aerial view. You can see these white dots. These are the uh, met masts. Two have already been built. Two are still being planned. In between is the site earmarked for the WTG. And around two kilometers, we've got two nests of the red kite here. So the most frequent flight movements in the area are red kite flight movements. Other areas which are frequent, for example, are the kestrel, the honey buzzard, and the raven, as well as some other areas which are also frequently active. Now we're coming to the identity flight system, a system which has eight fixed wide-angle cameras permanently monitoring a horizontal area of 360 degrees with a vertical angle of minus one to plus 64 degrees. And the task of the camera is object detection. Once the wide-angle cameras have detected an object, a moving high-resolution stereo camera will uh, immediately um, pan to this object that was detected, decide on distance, size, and take photographs. On the basis of the photographs, the species is then identified on the basis of a neural network, and the species which we detected was the red kite. The camera also follows, i.e. tracks, the flight path of the bird with the coordinate system. On the left-hand side, you have the identified system site here situated just between one of the red kite nesting sites and the test field. And here we have the view from the wide-angle cameras on the upper half towards north and the lower half towards south. In the south, you just about recognize the two met masts which have already been built. And what you also see on these pictures, which is sort of areas in, in black. These are masked zones, which for reasons of data protection are excluded from detections. There tend to be things like roads and buildings. The system data are presented as Excel sheets, which can be downloaded from the web platform, a section of which is here. Here we have the track ID, date and timestamp, distance, and so on and so forth, all with the uh, relevant photo by way of evidence. Talking about the principle of the test and the questions we asked, the idea was to compare system data with independent comparative data, which were collected in the surrounding area, 700 meters around the identified system. One objective was to look at the detection rate, how many of the independently detected flight paths were also detected by the IDF. The next uh, objective was identification, how many of the flight paths identified by the IDF were classified correctly? And then distance dependence. Will the detection rate decrease with increasing distance to the IDF? And finally, reasons for non-detection. 
And now I present to you the independent comparative data. We had one set of data which was collated by means of the laser rangefinder and another one on the basis of uh, um, a radio collared red kite. And the LRF data, we have data pertaining to a variety of different individual birds monitored over nine days where we have about 3,000 positions, individual positions, which have uh, then been collated and made up in 246 flight paths. The time resolution was between 2 and 10 seconds each. When we're looking at the GPS data, these are data just taken from one individual bird. And here I use the data from the exact same nine days that we had the data from the laser range finder, plus three additional days uh, because the weather conditions were poor. Here again, we had about 3,000 positions, and they were um, put together to make 162 flight paths. The temporal um, resolution was also between 1 and 10 seconds, and we uh, barometrically corrected the, fl the altitude flight altitude because with telemetry data, it's always very difficult to correctly assess the altitude. Here we see where exactly in the territory it was here. In yellow, that's the IDF site. Blue, that's the nesting site of a red kite pair where the male was radio collared. And here in the test site, that was the site for the laser rangefinder observations. All the data were read into QGIS in order to find out whether GPS or LRF flight paths were indeed detected by the ADF, we used the following basis. Date timestamp, uh, course and shape of flight path, distance, altitude, and the photographic evidence provided by the IDF. Non-detectable or non-assessable were the following flight paths, which were then re excluded, namely flight paths from which all the point positions uh, were within a mass zone or were outside the visual uh, field of vision of the camera, then flight paths which were extremely short, where very few points were very close in spatial and temporal terms, or if resolution was coarse. In other words, there were very few uh, dots, but very far from each other in terms of time and space. Here we have three examples of detection on the left-hand side. In red, that's the flight path, which we did with the laser rangefinder. On the right-hand side, in blue, that's the GPS flight path. And orange is the IDF flight path, as recorded by the system. And in the middle here, we have one example uh, where we um, superimpose the three methods on top of each other. Yellow, that's the circumference of 700 meters. And beautifully seen on the pictures is the photographic evidence that this bird actually has the radio collar, so it was clear that the GPS bird. Now I'm coming to the results already. In total, there were 146 LRF, 162 GPS flight paths which were detected. Um, 103 LRF and 121 GPS flight paths were classified as to be detected by the IDF. Of the LRF flight paths, 91 were detected by the IDF, which approximates to 88.3% detection rate. Of the 121 GPS flight paths, 100 were detected, which is a detection rate of 82.6%. Of the 91 LRF flight paths, 89 were correctly categorized as the target species, corresponding to 97.8% of the GPS flight paths, 99% were correctly classified. Then here we have a table which looks at distance dependency for the detection rate, and I'll have the laser range finder and the GPS values taken together. Here in this row, we have the distance class 0 to 100, 100 to 200, and so on and so forth. 
The next um, row is the number of flight paths for this distance uh, class, and the lowest row is the detection rate dependent on distance. And what you see beautifully here is the detection rate is um, at a very high level, up to 700 meters. And here, one additional result. Uh, on a random basis, I looked at false negative, false positive rate, which is based exclusively on the IDF system data. I used the photographic evidence of three complete days, which uh, were recorded by the IDF. In these three days, the IDF recorded 1,249 flight paths, 388 could be identified as belonging to the target species on the basis of photographic evidence. 822 were not the target species, and 39 flight paths could not be assessed because the pictures were out of focus or blurred. Within the target species, only five were false negatives. In other words, were considered to be a non-target species. That's the false negative rate of 1.3%. And correspondingly, 98.7% were correct positive. Within the non-target species, only one flight path was a false positive, which was mistakenly classified as the target species, which is a 0.1% false positive rate. And correspondingly, 99.9% .9 were correct negative. Just for the reasons why certain uh, flight paths were not detected, about 50% of those not detected were uh, low ground flow paths, close to the ground, because the territory around the site is, uh, has a slight incline. It's quite possible that low flying birds uh, don't uh, get shown up against the sky, but against a uh, grassy slope, and that's much more difficult detected than if you have the bird against the sky. But the system manufacturer is actually working at improving that as well, so that that background can also be detected or birds against different backgrounds. Then some of the birds simply cross through the masked zones, which could have made detection more difficult. And equally, there are some flights uh, which started from a low um, seating position. We have the example here. We have a whole range of these uh, phone masts for telephone lines, which are just 11 meters tall. And if you're looking at this here, you can see the red kite loves perching on one of these masts. And if a flight path starts from the top of one of these masts, then they're often too low to be detected. Approximately 33% of cases showed several birds uh, traveling at the same time, and the system was already tracking one bird. In 12% of cases, solar reflection might have uh, been a factor as well. We should also mention that these different factors sometimes occurred in combination. So it isn't always very clearly uh, possible to differentiate the reason why a bird was not successfully detected. And that brings me to the summary and conclusion regarding detection characteristics. The IDF complies with the recommendations coming from the Competence Centers uh, Workshop uh, Series recommendations. Other points were not assessed. So the system was supposed to allow detection of distance, position, and uh, flight direction, which it did. For reasons of efficiency, species recognition were to be done. And so the um, error rate for the species recognition of the red kite was very low. Then the detection range for the red kite of minimum 700 meters was also complied with, and the detection rate of a minimum of between 75 and 80 percent was also complied with because the average of the test result was 85 percent. 
Two general comments which are very important to me, and it's not something which applies only to the IDF, but in general for all detection systems. The more flight activity there is in one area, the greater, obviously, is the risk that detection systems will sooner or later make a mistake. And uh, large detection rate is useless if uh, the uh, targeted species frequently uh, flies off from positions which are close to the WTG, for example, perching on a pole. Thank you very much for your attention with this, and I've given you a few snapshots from red kites just to give you an idea of what it's like.